Hey everyone, so um, I've noticed after a lot of you start using the time coding and you start bringing some of your time coding from Reaper, etc. Uh, some of you come across the problems with uh, with the time coding not being precise as you wanted due to different things relates to the um, to the type of the time coding, how many frames you've used here and there, etc., etc. Again, this all can be easily fixed by applying offset, and I cannot repeat uh, like again that. Uh, like everything is actually described in the manual so I've decided to actually make another tutorial and I hope it will be useful. I'll show you a few little things about time coding and how to apply your uh, offsets uh, on your timing. Okay, so um, we I've got a queue stack with just uh, uh, 10 steps. Again, if you don't know how to create a time coding queue, uh, queue stack, basically this is how it's done. Um, if you have a queue stack, yeah, you press queue timing, it's standard queue stack, you click on the hold menu and then it selects the, the, the whole column. And in another tutorial showed you how to open the options. You click here and you choose the time code. Right, okay, so you already know this from another tutorial where I showed you how to use the time code. So the problem is, as I realized, that some of you, um, uh, some of you have a problem with the um, with the time, uh, with the timing between between the timing that comes from your external uh, source and the one that you actually have in a queue stack. So, how to offset your stuff? So, first of all, before you start bringing uh, the um, uh, CSV file from Reaper, one thing I would always suggest is to do this. So, by default, you have the internal time code. So, just for you to understand, the internal time code works on based on seconds and the hundreds of a second. So, what it means is, if you look here, you have, uh, I would say, hours, minutes, seconds, and then you have hundreds of a second. Right, okay? So, because this is basically based on the same principles like uh, uh, I think like Winamp used to do it's on a hundreds of a second so it's not actually looking at frames but if you're using external time code this is m a lot of times based on 25 frames 30 frames 24 frames etc where this settings coming into effect it's here in the setup MIDI time code and here are your settings time code frame type so you can see here by default it says 30 so that means for every second you have 30 uh, you have uh, 30 frames every 31st frame that means it's a plus one extra second that's added to your time code so this is very important when you bring in the time code from external sources just make sure this matches with the uh, Time, time con settings that you actually have in the magic queue because if you're bringing the settings of 25 frames and you have here 30 that's not going to work correctly anyway so you set here correct setting then when we go in a queue stack before you import your time code settings i would say change the time code from ex internal click here and change to external so now this will be actually listening to the settings of the MIDI time code here so that means for every second it's only 30 frames right so this is this part we've covered okay we we'll go to the next one how to apply the offset okay so if you want to apply per queue offset or per multiple queues offset one of the way you can do is you can actually select multiple of those cues okay and as i showed in another tutorial you actually if you click here it will bring you uh, the options which says set tc which means set time code with the hours minutes seconds dot frames and then you have plus and minus and i think this actually what buffles a lot of a lot of users they actually don't know how to apply this setting so uh Basically, this works. Uh, this works quite quite simply. So, if you look here, so you have. Let's pretend that you are running uh, a time code from the from the south uh, from the 
from external software that runs as the tracks. So the first song is the track one, second song is the track two, etc, etc. So that means you would think that the first numbers is going to be your track number, then there's going to be your minutes of the track, and then there's going to be seconds and the frames. So if you click here and if you want to adjust just seconds, only seconds, let's say I want to actually shift my time by two seconds. For this, you only have to press plus and two. So if you press plus two, you will see that it has applied two seconds offset on your cues. Yeah, so now it's three seconds. Right, okay, we can put it, select it again, click here, and if we want to put it back to where it was before, so it was uh, the, fir the, the second cue started from one second, you will press the same thing as a minus two seconds and press enter. Okay, so now, if you would like to apply extra frames here, so you would like to add, let's say, three extra frames, not 30, but three frames. So you click here and press plus dot, uh, dot three. Because dot three means it's a single number of three. That means it's only three frames. So if I press enter, you will see it has only added for me three frames. If I wanted to add 30 frames, then I would have to press plus dot three zero but in my case if I press three zero it's going to be another minute uh, oh actually yeah so if I press th three zero press enter you're going to see that it has added one second and you're going to say hold on a second where's the second came from and I will re I will just explain to you again because this is coming from this setting of 70 to be 30 frames per second right okay so let's go back We'll select it and we'll say minus 33 frames and this goes back to us to all of them to be minus but okay I'm gonna set it as plus one I can set and it's gonna be like this but I can quickly go as pressing two three four five six seven you can do it this way as well but the other thing you can actually do here is if you select all this uh, again all your uh, cues all your timing and then let's say you want to add only the track number for this you press plus then you add uh, one as a track number then the trick is you need to put the correct number of uh, uh, slash buttons so uh, symbols so one you're actually specifying that this is the track then two that you're specifying it's not actually for minutes and three that you're specifying it's only applying for the for the uh, uh, for the track but nothing to do with anything else and then you press enter that way you can see your track has been uh, the, the the track number has been updated to one so that's why you've got track number one and every second stayed the same. Again, you want to change it back, minus one, slash, slash, slash. Okay, if you wanted to update only the, the, the minutes, then you would do plus one, slash, slash, and that means it only applies to uh, to minutes rather than rather than anything else. So again, we can go back. Say minus one slash slash. You see, if I press three times slash, that would apply to my track. But because I did only two, it applies to my minutes. But what if you would like to add a track and a second here? That way you have to press this plus one slash slash and then you press one as well dot zero zero now you press enter and that way you applied a track number 
and a one second to the second side. So again, again, minus one dash one zero boom done. Okay, so I hope that was useful. This is uh, this is obviously applicable if you want to change within the within the uh, some steps of the queue stack or maybe all steps. But when you are actually touring and the let's say the um, uh, the band actually changed maybe the queue number, uh, the track number. So instead of you changing the track number all the time, you can actually keep it as it is. So that means being zero, whatever. And we've added from, I think it's 1842, we've added a new function in the, in the queue stack options. So if you click on the view options, so we keep the timing intact, intact. We don't change anything here. We go to the view options and you have in advanced, you have a time code offset option. So this setting, it applies the same way as what I've did, I did just now for the queue stack steps. But when you apply it here, this automatically applies not only for your queues, but also for any of your tracks in the queue stack as well. So, which is really good and helpful because you don't need to actually go and change the timing here and in the tracks. Uh, changing the time here applies for the whole queue stack, including all the tracks as well. And this is really useful because that means you change it only in one place and then you don't need to go and change or make an error across any of your steps, uh, steps by, by mistake. Again, if you want to look here, you can always click and press plus one slash 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 enter and that applied all the time in here if you want to make it zero the easiest one to do is press four times zero one two three four press enter and you have it all zero cool so um this is about the q stack and again when you have the queue stack done, if at some point you decided to actually run your queue stack with a go button and check how the queues look like, instead of waiting for the time code to come in, uh, to to uh, send the time code from time code from external setting, you can always temporarily disable the time code by pressing in quarter D the button here. So if you click here and you say turn time code off for this queue stack, you press yes. Now. Even if the time code is actually coming into your uh, Magic U console, the Q stack will completely ignore it. Cool. I hope it was useful for you. Thank you very much for your time and have a lovely evening. Bye bye.